so beautiful. Sorry, John, I didn't copy that. Could you repeat, over? Sorry, Houston, just overcome by the beauty of space. Roger that, John. Houston, I have my eyes on the prize. The moon is in view. Roger that, John. You are go for the moon. Mm. Mm. Houston, we have deliciousness. Why do you keep calling me Houston? No moon. Ooh. Houston, I'm drifting. Hello everyone, welcome to today's so-and-so show. I'm Brandon and this guy right here is John. Yeah, hello. Today we're gonna take a look at one of the more epic stories in history and get a little schooling in some scientific stuff. Nice telescope. Yeah, if it worked. Well, it's not working? No, no, every time I look in here, it's just pitch black. Oh, we are in your basement. Yeah, yeah, but there's light in my basement and I don't yeah. see any light. Huh. I don't know nothing, weird. this thing's broke. Uh, well, did you read the directions? Brandon, don't be ridiculous. So no? Of course not. Okay, well, it might be a good idea to read what the people who made the telescope wrote about it, don't you think? Never! Okay, this is going well. I wanna look at the stars, Brandon. I want to stare into the heavens and see the glory that God has made, and then you mock me? I'm not mocking you. See? I think it's... What? Mocker! I'm not mocking you! I challenge you to a non-copyright compliant laser sword battle! Seriously, John, what are we doing here? You mock my desire to search the stars. Again, I don't think you understand what the word mock means. Silence! It's we will now do battle as the ancient ones did. Ancient ones? There was lasers. Now you have a bucket. Whoa, how'd you do that? Choose your weapon. Uh. <laughs> you think you can defeat me with that children's bat? Whoa, how did you do that? I don't know. Now, take this. These were new shoes. Sorry. Hey, that must be today's guest. Yeah, yeah, cool. Maybe they can help me out with my telescope. Yeah, please welcome someone who knows stuff. Mm -hmm. Wait, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we awesome. Go. All right. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. These are all yeah. fine. All right. Appreciate cool. it. Hey, so tell everyone who you are and what you know. I'm Edward Anders, and I study the stars. Oh. Very cool. Yes, this is a perfect for today because you know you study the stars. I do. Uh, yes, I do, day and night. Well, I didn't know that was something you could do during the day. Oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, it's easier during the day. Really? Really? You use a yeah. telescope in the during yeah, the day? Uh, well, no. I I use a camera, like a camera, or a, my phone camera, and I and I use an apps. Like map apps for my to, computer? To study the stars. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, so like, okay. So when I discover a new location of the star, I just plug in the address and boom, got a new star from a map. Oh, okay, I get it. So you, you chart the stars like on a star map. Well, yeah, that's me. Edward Anders, number one salesman of maps to the stars. Ah, uh, okay, hold on. Um, <laughs> can we see one of these? Yeah, for five dollars. <laughs> Excuse me? Five five dollars? Yeah, I Yeah, we I can't just yeah. give it away for free. That'd be against company policy. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't have my wallet with me. Do you have no, any? I got it, I got it. Okay. Uh, I take Venmo. Oh, there you go. Oh. You have five dollars in pennies. Yeah, I don't carry cash anymore. Okay, it, it spends. Awesome. Yeah, here you go. Well, thank you. <laughs> Think you'll be happy to check it out? Okay. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Ah, yes. This is what I was suspecting. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a map to the stars. Map to the stars. Yeah. Like a star chart. No, no. Can you read this map? It's a map to oh. Hollywood stars. Hollywood stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the big actors. Look, this map has the places that they live at and where they frequent. <laughs> Look, it's. It's the best thing. Okay, well, uh, this is not the kind of star that we were hoping to talk about today. No. Sorry. I don't understand. What do you? What other star is there? What? I mean, you like the so you're stars pointing. to the sky. Star, so yeah, oh. Stars in the sky. Yeah. Oh, like it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about that. Okay, great. Yeah. Hey, Edward, thanks for coming in. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, this man. is really great. I yeah. appreciate your business. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, hey, one last thing. You have a lens cap on that thing. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, it should work now. All if right, you bye. Take it outside. Okay. And this was someone who knew something. We should really do better research when we invite a guest on the show. Hey! Hey! What? I think I see something! I, th I think it's a star or a planet, maybe? Hello! <laughs> hey, Kellen! What's up? You guys ready for a little history lesson? Yeah, we are. John? Yep! All good. It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! It's Bible Story Time with Kellen! We're supposed to say that together. All right, fellas, I wanted to talk to you about a man named Abram, but today I thought I'd mix things up a bit and tell you this story outside. Outside? Hey, this is new for you. Well, not really outside. This kind of outside. Gotcha. Yeah, I want to use the stars to tell today's story. Wait, 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 just to clarify, what kind of stars? The ones in the sky? Good, yeah, good, mm -hmm. good, carry on. Follow me. Ugh. 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 Mm. Ah, comfy. Okay, so a long time ago, a man named Abram, living in the land of Haran, which is in the southern part of where the country Turkey is today, right about where the bright star is. He lived there with his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. Now, Abram was a pretty well-off guy. He had lots of sheep, land, and servants, but there was one thing he didn't have that he really wanted, children. But Abram was 75 years old, and Sarai wasn't much younger, so the chances of them having children was pretty slim. But one day, Abram heard a voice. It was the voice of God. God said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God promised to make Abram a nation. But back in that time, you became a nation by having kids. And as we already covered, Abram didn't have any. But do you know what Abram did? He trusted what God said. So he packed up all his stuff, and he moved his entire family in the direction God told him. And they did this for years, trusting in God the whole time. Years later, after Abram's nephew Lot had moved on and gone his own way, God spoke to Abram again. Abram, do not be afraid. And Abram said, Lord and King, what can you give me? I still don't have any children. And God responded to Abram saying, look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's how many children will be born into your family. God even changed Abram's name to Abraham, which meant father of many. God promised something that seemed impossible. But Abraham kept trusting God. Well, one day, Abraham was visited by the Lord and two strangers. And get this, one of the strangers told Abraham that when they returned in one year, his wife would give birth to their first child. Now that was ridiculous to Sarah, who used to be called Sarai, because she was like old enough to be someone's great, great, great grandmother. But guess what? One year later, they had the baby and they named him Isaac and God kept his promise to Abraham. <sighs> now 
Not only did God turn Abraham's descendants into a great nation, but the entire world would be blessed through him. Jesus, the savior of the world, is part of Abraham's family tree. What? That is mind-blowingly cool. Just goes to show you that when you listen to and obey God, even when we don't know how things will turn out, God can do some incredible things through us. I'll say. Hey, thanks, Kellen. Oh, and nice yard. Huh? <laughs> oh, right. Easier to mow that way. Wow. So Abraham obeyed God even when it didn't really make sense. Well, I, I mean, it didn't make sense to Abraham, right, yeah. but, uh, but I think God has a little more insight into what is possible than you or me. Or Abraham. Yeah, right. So I'm guessing the same can be said about leaders God puts in our life as well. Yeah, a lot of times someone is a leader because over time they've learned some valuable lessons. Or God's revealed something to them that they could pass on to you. Hey, you know what I'm thinking? Reveal the question. <laughs> 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 All right, so what do you think your leaders know that you don't. Hmm. Oh, that is a good question. Yeah, talk about those leaders in your life, your teachers, your parents. Your small group leaders. Yeah, what do they know that you might not? Yeah, talk about it amongst yourselves, and we'll see you next time on The, the So-and-So -so Show. I don't know how accurate this is. Oh, I think it's pretty cool. Oh, where should I go next? Um, Find me some stars, please. All right. Oh! Oh, there was that dog. That was in Beethoven? Oh, you mean Beethoven. No, 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 yeah, that's the movie. Right. No, that's the dog. No, 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 but the dog's name. It's Beethoven. Yeah, the movie is Beethoven, but what's the dog's name that was in Beethoven? Rex. Oh, yeah, that's right.